welcome to my paper Pomegranate Forest. My name is Christina and I'm so happy to share this journey with you. I just want to take a moment and show you a preview of what we'll accomplish. I will teach you how to make paper pomegranates and especially how to make this big branch with fruits, flowers and leaves. Making this branch can be a real challenge but I'm sure you'll do a great job. Its uh, ornamental beauty really spoke to me, so I did a lot of useful research, which uh, you will find in the printable section. We will learn how to make the angular globe shape of the pomegranate with all its uh, imperfections and bright coloring. How to make these lovely ruffled red fruits with uh, the tiny buds. How to make uh, the glossy leaves and uh, the half fruit with seeds which uh, i uh, really which it uh, really adds a creative challenge to our project and uh, some new techniques that uh, you'll find very useful so um, depending on what's more comfortable for you uh, in this point of your experience level of working with uh, paper flowers you can decide to make only the fruits you can make one fruit with a few leaves at first or just a bunch of uh, pomegranates to have in a bowl and use as a decoration. When and uh, if you're comfortable and confident with your work skills, you can definitely try to make the entire project. I just want to show you as much as possible, but also to give you some space to adapt and be creative. You can see that uh, this fruit has a round but angular shape uh, that looks like a hexagon or sometimes a pentagon, but uh, with uh, uneven uh, sides. So uh, you should keep uh, this in mind for the next step. Next, I will repeat the same technique as before. I will seal and cement everything together with uh, glue and paper strips. So uh, we've made our uh, pomegranate molds and left them to dry overnight. And uh, now it's time uh, to cover them with uh, crepe paper. We have uh, the fine Italian crepe paper, but also uh, the heavyweight German red paper. I will demonstrate how to work with both of them. A uh, quick note for the green color. Uh, I did a lot of uh, tests with a lot of papers, so if you don't want to work with the fine 90 grams cream paper, you can try the heavyweight uh, German cream paper. We can begin to make some uh, anatomic parts, which are the stamens and the calyx, also known as the crown of the fruit. I uh, have a preview of the segments that we will make for these elements. Uh, let me illustrate on this uh, pomegranate, this uh, brown piece uh, that I have here will, um, with all these tiny fringes will become uh, the stamen cluster which uh, we will glue at the top of uh, our uh, pomegranate mold. Before we begin, I wish to share some information and knowledge about the lamination technique. I'm uh, sure that you've heard by now of this technique. I've been using it for many years. It basically means that uh, we are gluing two sheets of paper to obtain a thicker and stronger paper with a smoother texture. Uh, if you are used to working with this technique, that's great. But if you're new to this, you may have to practice for a bit on smaller pieces of paper so you can understand the process and the steps of this method. I'm moving faster. Be careful not to cut all the way. Just cut uh, one centimeter inside the strip and uh, slowly move it towards the scissors. I like to keep doing it, doing this until I think it's perfect and uh, all the sides have been covered in glue paste. I know this is a work of uh, patience and dedication. If you feel like you need to skip this, go ahead. But um, I love doing this so much. And I think uh, um, this kind of detail work uh, makes the difference between uh, regular uh, paper artwork and botanical realism. 
uh, you can make five or six or seven uh, it really doesn't matter uh, because uh, not all pomegranates have uh, six calyxes um, this is why uh, I uh, encourage you to cut those uh, calyx uh, strips freehand I will show you how to finalize the shape by making uh, the contoured margins but uh, before that uh, we have to glue the seeds on the mold so uh, we have arrived at uh, the most uh, important moment in the development of this creative process uh, which is painting the pomegranate with acrylic i have my plate with the colors and the bowl with water um, I have already put uh, the colors on my plate. This is magenta red, vermilion red, brilliant red, yellow, ochre, uh, brown, and white. I uh, have uh, the two paint brushes with a filbert tip. Uh, the color scheme I just made. I uh, have this uh, pomegranate mold which I will paint first. So the papers are dried and we can cut the leaves next. Uh, the first thing uh, that I do is uh, I remove uh, these five millimeters of unpainted paper from each side. And uh, we will be able to make uh, eight leaves from uh, each piece uh, for uh, big size and uh, for medium. So I will bring the template page and uh, cut uh, one piece in advance. Uh, so what I do is I fold the paper in half and measure six centimeters, uh, make a mark and cut. So I get uh, these two strips with different sizes. I'm uh, placing one on top of uh, the other and uh, cut in half. I uh, ended up with uh, a lot of these small pieces that I will use to cut uh, the small leaves. So uh, we have almost uh, completed the leaves. It's uh, a lot of hard work, I know, um, so many steps and details to learn and remember. But uh, just look how pretty these are with um, the different sides, uh, the front being green and the glossy versus uh, the matte uh, light yellowish green of the back side. Um, all of this uh, movement and uh, the lacy effect uh, will look uh, so nice on the finished uh, tree branch. I have the page with the flower anatomy which will help us understand the shape we want to make. So first we will make the style from the middle. Uh, this will be the support for the volume of the ovary. Uh, next we will add the stamen strips in a cluster. Uh, the petals and the calyx strip is the last element that uh, completes the flower. And I also like to add uh, some uh, brown pastel powder with a clean paintbrush uh, to the salmon cluster. You can hardly see any difference, but uh, for me these details uh, really matter and I never skip them. And I'm doing the same uh, to the um, flower. And this is uh, ready. So I've made my demonstration with the intense orange paper. Uh, but uh, remember that uh, we have uh, these other uh, vibrant red uh, petal pieces. And um, I wish to show you a finished flower made with this color. So this is it.
uh, it's also very beautiful. Uh, the back is all red for this one, um, but I also like um, this color difference from the one we've just made. Uh, orange face versus red. Uh, you can rearrange the petals if you wish and expand them for a bit. Uh, you can also see that the red flower has only six petals, which is a great option. We have uh, reached uh, the final step of this uh, creative process. I will show you how to build this tree branch uh, with this uh, central stem that holds the pomegranate on top. Um, from it, uh, we will attach uh, the two flower uh, twigs. and um, these other uh, two extra twigs uh, right, uh, with leaves and the half fruit uh, at the end and uh, let's take a closer look uh, you can see all these beautiful uh, glossy and curly leaves that are attached uh, all over the branch and the lovely coloring effect that this bark paper has um, we can see the white spots so um, this is what we have what we are trying to recreate and um, i will guide you to do so uh, but for the moment uh, let's put uh, the branch aside because i need the space uh, so um, first uh, let's uh, take the painted bar paper uh, because we need to cut it into strips so uh, all of this uh, put uh, together will be part of the final uh, stem construction feel free to rearrange the twigs if you wish um, you can bend them for a bit change uh, the direction of the flowers and um, rearrange them as you wish. I'm so happy that we've reached this point um, and uh, I still have to add a few touches. Uh, first I will paint that yellow spot we saw before at the back of the pomegranate. I have some red acrylic paint left and uh, I'm using it for this spot. And uh, the last thing I like to do is uh, to add a few extra pan pastel coloring uh, with this uh, warm brown uh, called um, uh, red iron oxide. So uh, with uh, this uh, pointed sponge, I take some color and um, I just uh, powder the stem from place to place, but especially near uh, the stalks of the leaves. So uh, you can decide to make uh, just uh, the pomegranates at first, uh, either the simple red uh, paper version or just uh, be brave and uh, paint with me. I uh, also hope you will engage to do the entire tree branch. Uh, because this would be a great opportunity for you to learn uh, not only the creative uh, methods uh, that help achieve a paper fruit, uh, but also a lot of uh, useful techniques uh, that I use all the time in my uh, creative process uh, when making paper flowers and leaves. And um, the half fruit um, is a story in itself. Uh, a mix of uh, different techniques, um, some old and some new, and uh, different mediums. Um, also, uh, feel free to color the pomegranates uh, with some other different red shades. Uh, this fruit is known for having a wide range of vibrant colors, um, from yellow ochre to pink or uh, red purple. Uh, so uh, you have a lot of uh, room uh, to experiment. 